Oh god. It looks it's, gnarly from here. Oh huh? my god, what are you guys doing? <laughs> this is your idea. Dude, it feels like we're gonna flip over. Down here at the cameras or at the hammers, and uh, we're getting set up with Blake Wilkie. And uh, this, this is not the buggy. This is your what do you call this thing? The blood shark. The blood shark Bronco. You know, I'm a little older. I call that the OJ Bronco. Let's go. So baby. he is hasn't even really put it in four low. Hasn't crawled it. We're putting a couple cameras on it. And the only way to do this odd natural to test it out is uh, straight up. Go hit a little rock section. You ready? Make it easy. Uh, I think I'm ready. Let's do it. Let's go. You guys built this thing fast. Yeah, like under six weeks. That's with a bunch of other shit going on. When John said that you guys were going to make it to the hammers, I was like, there's no way. Yeah. So here we go. Oh, God. It looks it, gnarly from here. Oh, huh? my God. What are you guys doing? Oh, this is way bigger than I anticipated. It looks a lot bigger when you're down in here, doesn't it? Oh my god, it feels so tippy. <laughs> Luckily, this isn't super off camera, huh? Oh baby. Oh yeah. I sure. think back driver a little bit. Passenger. Driver, go driver. Think? Yeah, forward and driver. Yeah. I think passenger. You think? See, look, they're telling you driver too. Driver, driver. See that? Crawl it. You gotta trust it. And then stay driver so you can get around that rock. Way around now it. Now passenger, not yet. Straight up. Now come around passenger, you got it. Your back tire is gonna kinda catch this rock. We're going over it now, now hard, hard passenger. You got it. Dude, it feels like we're gonna flip over. <laughs> She's a little tippy, isn't she? Oh my Go god. Back this way. Yeah. She's very tippy. She's flexing though. Yeah. Now back this way, back this way, hard this way. We'll go right through here. There we go. I can't see hey, shit. For the first, there's not a lot of such sight, but for the first time out, nice and easy. Oh, come God. On. My heart rate is <laughs> pumping right now. Oh, I love it. I love it. Dude, she's just crawling. She's doing work. God dang. <laughs> I thought we were flipping it. No way. Like, no way. All right, so. Before I get before we get out of this thing, tell me what you guys got going inside. What's the uh, interior appeal here? Interior. Uh, we'll start front to back. We got a Switch Pro to control all of our lights and accessories and whatnot. Absolutely. Um, and, rugged, and mounted right on the factory dash. Very clean install. Where the original four-wheel drive electronic transfer case shifter was. Oh, so you switched it over to a manual shift case, huh? Yep. I found. Do, all you the guys parts. know what case you put in this thing? Uh, I think it's a 1356, isn't it, Borg Warner? That sounds right. We'll go with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And I uh, got it from a friend up in Riverside um, who had the shifter, all the um, uh, all linkage, the languages. Yeah. and uh, two T-cases, actually. So I just pulled the carpet up, and there's already that access panel there. For the factory shifter to go through the floor. It's just a pain in the butt to get out of there. But... Um, got that in there because I heard that these are much more reliable way more reliable you yeah. don't want to deal with electronics yeah and then uh, mob armor mount for my phone to make it comfortable to where my phone's in a safe nice place we got the little shark hula hoop dancer absolutely rugged radio so we could talk to our friends and that all goes in this console that uh, you guys built yep 
Uh, Who helped you build this? I built it. You built that? Yeah. I like it. It's easy. I mean, this was a very simple one compared to some of the other aluminum work that uh, we've done and whatnot. I always appreciate the drink holders, too. A couple of them. Every vehicle has to have a drink holder. Absolutely. Right? Man. And then wrapped it. Stereo? Rockford Fosgate. Absolutely. Um, really clean head head unit. Um, those are badass. I have them in this a lot is of a, toys. This is uh, uh, decommissioned, as we'd call it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it looks classic in there. The uh, the Sony, uh, probably a six disc CD or something. I thought about putting the the radio up there and stuff, but this wouldn't I'll fit that. I'll find something to go up there. Yeah. Um, uh, then moving on to the seats, I got uh, PRP seats that have um, custom Shreddy logos in the headrest, and then the white stitch, the white piping. Um, yep red suede with a small diamond. Look how much room is in this thing. There's yeah. there's enough room almost to put another seat between us. Another seat goes right here? Yeah, oh, that's I just what I'm talking I just about. I wasn't sure how much room I was gonna have. Um, so have you actually mounted it yet, the, the other seat? Yeah. So that is sweet. So yeah. I used one of these seats to mount it. Three person, rock crawler, pre-runner, you know. Fun haver. Let's get out and uh, show us around this thing. All right. So, start with, um, Rock sliders, right? Yep. We made uh, we made those all in house. D O M, okay. of course, right? Um, actually, that's Chrome Ollie. Oh, Chrome Ollie, huh? Yeah, dude. Uh, IMS Metals hooks me up, so I mean, for uh, the price of D O M, I was able to get Chrome Ollie for pretty much the same price. So I figured, why not? I'm gonna bash this thing on shit. Dude, I don't think that uh, we've used a lot of Chrome Ollie on rock sliders, so you're uh, leading the leading the charge there. <laughs> yeah. Um, so. X Comp tires. Yep, these are their AT tires. These were uh, the Trophy Bug, the Trophy Truck uh, takeoff. Uh, we are takeoff tires, uh, Method Beadlock wheels. Um, these are the ATs. I want a bunch AT. of siping in here. So like that kind of terrain, we just went up with that rock like that. Tons of grip, right? Exactly. And that was my thought process. You know, the MTs have the big gnarly lugs on them. And uh, the crossover do everything truck, these tires are going to work right. Yeah, for the street. Have you driven it on the side. road yet? Yeah, uh, I thought it was going to freaking flip over at like 15 miles an hour when I made a tight left. You're working on a little body roll scenario, right? I mean, uh, <laughs> as you guys saw right there. Yeah. You got it. Dude, it feels like we're going to flip over. One of the things is it, it might be a little loose, but come on, it's the first time up on the rock. So, uh, shocks, kings of course, right? Yep, these are actually king IVPs, so I can click them up if I want to and, and go a little faster through the bumps. So uh, so they're 3.0s, three 3.0 three right? internal bypass. And so they do have adjusters, huh? Oh on yeah. On the top of the reservoir, yeah. Nice, piggyback reservoir. Beautiful, I mean, they tuck real well up there, you just gotta clock them right. Yeah, the reservoir in that spot is actually, if it was back here, your tire would rub, it's a perfect spot. Yeah, it clears, it cycles. I've cycled it and had to cut, obviously, the fender and a bunch of stuff. Out. Absolutely, inner fenders, everything, right? King air bumps, and I noticed you got them uh, limited to two inches or so of travel, so it's not slamming on the bumps all the time. Exactly, that way we can get the CG low, and then if we are going through the bumps, it'll uh, give it a little extra resistance on the up travel. When it's flexing all out, obviously it's pushing the shock up on the one side higher, so it doesn't even really use all of the bump. It's more for getting over here. Dropping off a ledge or hitting yeah. a whoop or something like that. And by limiting the travel of that bump, you're not always in that bump zone with it so low a center of gravity where it's just popping and banging all the time. And the shock mounts were like a breeze. We were able to use the desolate bolt-on shock mounts. Oh yeah. Um, that you just locate with three eighths bolts and, and the, then you weld it on the front uh box yeah steel yeah. box and you just burn it up once you have the oh i see it shares bolt. right here that mount shares the the steering box bolts that's desolate shock mount yep and their track bar bracket goes right on there too huh it's simple it's oh, easy. Dude, that is awesome yeah and then uh this is our uh 7075 billet tie rod yep got the psc ram mounted off of the axle tube um, this is our clamp, and then uh, looks like you ended up with Synergy uh, drag link there. Yep, and then yep. tie rod ends are just Moog components. Stock factory stuff, you get them out of junkyard. Yeah, I got them uh, from Foil Parts. You know, they got, they can get that stuff there next day. So like, yep. it was quick, it was easy. Desolate had the uh, uh, Pittman arm as well. Yep. Um, so a lot of this stuff was just, 
off the shelf. I okay. noticed that you flipped the uh, track bar ball joint. Yep. And uh, and poked it up, and then now your track bar and drag link are matching. Yep. Exactly. Um, you can see they're really they're really close. They're to really parallel. almost parallel. Probably not going to be a lot of bumps here. Then. Bell, full belly skid pan there on the motor, huh? That was my custom was, was, doing. Was that Kevin drawing that on SolidWorks? That was actually me just with a couple jack stands setting it up in there after. I love it. Um, it kind of goes on to the factory engine cross member. It does. So you yep. have to cut the front of I the... I see. Otherwise it hits the diff, right? Yep. So in this Ford TTB, that bracket hung way down because the... Uh, the scissor stuff, you and know. Go up and, and cycle and clear the all that. Pivots were on there, so you yeah. cut that off and, and to get the solid axle in there. And then that one that kind of connects the two um, of those uh, gussets from side to side, Deslet also has that plate that bolts right on. You have to drill, I think, one or two holes. Okay. But I think one hole, but the other ones line up. You get them in there snug, drill that other hole in its comfortable place. And then I picked up the back two for that 3 16 um, plate, and then I just had measurements to cover the, the transmission skid plate. And I'm going to check this out. Use angle iron on the sides of them to help so, strengthen it. And look at that. So what's this bar right here coming off of your link mount? Again, that's a, a, a desolate mount that uh -huh. comes with their arms. Yeah. Um, and that just, just to hold it all together side to side it. yeah yep. keep it from twisting and flexing and doing weird stuff see the sliders welded into the chassis yep. and then transfer case skid plate as well yeah and then i had arizona drive shaft make a custom drive shaft i got the good forged uh yokes for the uh, uh the front and rear diffs yeah yep. um the front Drive shaft is just a factory part from that we got from Rocka Auto. It's like a Ford factory front drive shaft. They found the right size. That and they're is like, freaking this is, awesome. This, this is an off-the-shelf easy part. So, Blake, I'm looking at this, and I see our radius arms. Actually, I think these are, those are Desolate's radius arms, aren't they? They are, yeah. Yeah, not, okay. So, I'm looking at it. You have the upper link out on your radius arms. <laughs> that is how you get them to flex, but you do lose stability in it. I just felt that <laughs> you just <laughs> felt that and i think with a you know triangulated four link rear isn't helping you any no. in making that like a three link in the front so yep. uh i believe that the testing has been done and you should probably put that upper arm back in in the front <laughs> you know yeah because i thought we were gonna roll it on the first go <laughs> I'm like, I don't know where the threshold is, but we're damn close. We, we were good. We were and good. As you can see, I'm running a really high tire pressure right now. Yeah. Yeah. What is that? <laughs> 11? Yeah. Yeah. I was like, I don't know how much this is going to flex, but I'm going to start with 11. I probably should have started with like 15. I think you're good. I mean, we wheel with 10, 11 all the time. You know? uh, it's she's, just not she's good a heavy girl. going the fast. She's... She's good. You're, you, I, you know, I felt comfortable in it. I know you felt a little weird. I felt comfortable. Um, so this is where it gets Gucci. So we use your guys' trust to start it off and kind yeah. of acquire our, our pivot point that we had to work off off the top. Yeah, so that's our later model um, Sterling 10 and a half rear axle truss for you to yep. put your link mounts on. Yep. Yep. And then you went for trailing arms. I did, man. Kevin scanned um, the whole undercarriage and everything. Uh -huh. So he made um, our own pivot boxes to where these pivot boxes actually bolt into the factory front leaf springer mount. So it's actually almost in the location of where the front eye of the leaf spring is normally. And he sense. pushed it forward a little just bit a little further bit. Okay. just so you can get a longer arm. And I mean, arm. that is a short trailing arm. 28 inches. 28 inches. I mean, yeah, when it showed up, I was like, look how cute these are. And you're about 50%. <laughs> You're almost right in the middle of the arm. A little over, yeah. I want yeah. to say 60, 65-ish. Uh-huh. It's confusing <laughs> to go from the desert side to the rock crawling side of having a hard top up here and roll cage weight and all that kind of stuff. So he C-notched the it frame, is. too. Yeah, so we wanted to make a couple different versions of this rear link kit, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, the shock mount also bolts into to factory locations. And you and built holes. that shock mount too? Yeah, he yeah. built the whole shock upright and then we tied and, it, and it into. It's, you did have to cut the tub though, right? Oh yeah, for a 40 with how much uh, suspension it's cycling. So this whole wheel opening is opened up and brought into the frame, right? So it's straight up here. Cause normally exactly. it was out a little further. Yep. Cause this does look like just a giant, spot for open your tire. access yeah. yeah 
And yeah. it's crazy when this thing's 100% articulated in the rear, that tire is a quarter right up here inch off of this. It. And on full bump, you're all the way up into here, you know? Oh yeah, it's just nasty. And uh, this again has a king coil over. This is a 2.5, not a 3.0. Notice that. And it was yeah. because when it's fully articulated, the spring comes really close to. Oh, as it swings over, it hits the frame exactly. so the 3.0 wouldn't fit. Yeah. yeah. And then, um, yeah, the C-notch kit, just so you can get all the up travel out of it. And then kind of just nice high clearance tube bumper. And I noticed that uh, you kind of built in heavy duty here, tied into the to the trailer hitch, in case yep. you're towing, you know, your camper. So it's yeah. a stock tow hitch. Yeah. And I just basically took it from having that square stock on the bottom. Gotcha. And then just rotated it around and flipped it over and have it coming out the top and then I built my bumper off. Oh, I get I see exactly what you did. And so it brought this up higher. Yeah, and yeah. all the all the the, but, the whole bumper is removable. Yeah. So yeah. you just take the factory bolts out that go into the frame rail you, and my I can if I wad it up or something, I could just rip it off. And you guys also built a skid plate there on the tank. Yeah, Desolate sells those too for the desert guys and stuff like um Again. Oh, that's death. Okay. Yeah, that's cool. they they make it easy, and that's a, not the most ideal spot for a tank. But, nah, it'll work out. But it'll yeah, we'll freaking make yeah. that shit happen. You want me to open that, the back? That, so you can that, that truss here? is all tucked up in there, super tight. Yeah, let's. Can you open the back? Yeah, we also did the flush mount S2 Sport uh, Baja Designs lights with. Uh, um, the amber lens cover, which is cool for at dust in the night if we're going fast, you know, people can see us because the taillights aren't the brightest. I bought new stalkers just because yeah. I wanted to Yeah, well, you got to have the classic the look. look, right? Yeah, and then also, this is really cool. You know how for the spare tire, um, these bolt on? Yeah. So I just cut the bottom ear off and drilled the hole. Oh, and made it for your light mount. And then so that's the factory. Up. That's the factory setup. Oh, I mean, that's it's, awesome. It's clean, you know? Yeah. I just saw the, the opportunity and I'm like, I'm going to make this easy. So, classic tailgate right down. I got all this room for activity. There's a ton of room. You know how much beer you could put in here? Uh, a lot. A few ice chests. Yeah. yeah. LED lights up at the cage. Yep. Baja designs. Four Baja designs, interior lights. I also have one on each corner. Everybody overlooks tires. dome lights. Dome lights are so important at night. Yeah, it's beautiful, man. Yeah. Function. Like, Got your battery mounted behind the front seat. The cage obviously bolts into factory body mounts. And then the old body mounts were blown out. Yeah. They were just crusty and rusty. So um, we bought the Solo Motorsports um, aluminum solid amounts yeah so that way we can add a little bit of rigidity to the whole thing since the cage and everything is all tied in you're no longer trying to isolate the body exactly exactly. okay and the white top with the red i mean yeah you probably didn't have a lot of choice on what bronco you ended up with on that 2200 dollar marketplace ad you know but yeah it i was, think it worked out it was from a friend of mine that was actually moving to hawaii for work really and it was his dad's and uh you know, we had a, we've had a friendship since, yeah, for probably 14, 15 years. And um, after Kevin and I sold the, the Hammerhead, I was like, dude, I want to get uh, something to kind of cruise and crawl with, you know. Our friend Fern ended up buying the Hammerhead, and uh, he threw some parts at his Ranger, and I bought this Bronco that was a great decision. My, you know, my dad had one of these, too. But his was an Eddie Bauer, and it had a five-speed manual. Nice. Just randomly, and it was maroon, not yeah. red, but you know, leather, everything. Sweet. But uh, it's like got it. factory 351. Is that yep. what it has? Yep. yep. 5E 351. Yep. E4OD it's transmission. I not think. really fast. No. Hey, but that's not what you're trying to accomplish here. You're trying to accomplish, you know, rocks, have fun. Yeah, absolutely. I'm sure eventually you're gonna put something that has a little more, more, more punch, huh? I've already been talking about it, but I, I got other things I need to do first. Hey, there's a It'll lot of other. It'll get there. It'll yeah. get there. Let's eliminate that little body roll scenario. <laughs> yes. And, uh, and go from there. Well, I mean, uh, I know that we had a blast uh, you know, going back and forth with you guys and the fact that you didn't just pay somebody else to build a rig for you to come out here and have fun with, that you wanted to build it, set a deadline, made your deadline, brought it out here, wheeled it, you know, amongst your crazy busy everyday schedule of doing all your other stuff 
I mean, that's that's what real rigs are made of, right? Yeah, I mean, we're, again, that was, you know, we've wheeled it for a total of like maybe two minutes now. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, I think I'm gonna put that front bar back on the I front. think when you go back to camp, you should put the front radius arm, the upper mount back on. And then I wanna yeah. come and run the same trail. See if it feels any different. But I believe that really with this rig, you're gonna have to do a rear sway bar. Okay, I mean, you yeah. would know better than I would. Yeah. Kevin's the man. We already kind of pre I'm sure he left that. room for where the bar would be if it needs to be, so. Another cool thing to where if somebody didn't want to run such a large tire yeah. and they wanted to run a link system, say they want to run 35s or 37s, um, Kevin is also designing a different shock mount to where it's shorter, to where you don't have to C-notch it and do all this other gotcha. elaborate cutting. Yeah and tubbing and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. So you can still run a lot of the factory stuff. And still stuff. get it out in the wheel well on that trailing arm. Exactly. Okay. And then, so if you looked on those trailing arms, there's also a UHMW skid plate. I did see that on the bottom of the arm. Yeah, that have recessed uh, quarter 20s. Yeah, I like that. And then if you yeah. look back here, there's also two more holes on the trailing arm. Okay. So if you want to go- You could do a one-to-one -one shock or Mild closer. or wild. Yeah. So. He has another cantilever system that we're working on that picks up the rear hangers yeah. to where you can run the coil over off of a um, cantilever system. Gotcha. And mm -hmm. then you don't have to cut the shock mount up into the cap. Yeah. yeah. So it makes it super clean and very universal and easy. Or we can run a bypass shock off of it. Yeah. Coil over bypass if you want to go fast. Well, yeah, if you left this trailing arm and then did cantilever on the bypass, you'd have the best of both worlds, and coil over and a bypass. He's figuring all that out. We yeah. just didn't have quite enough time to get there to do that. Look, where's the latch on this thing? You know, I'm a GM guy. I don't know where these Ford latches are. Look oh. at that. Look at that Gucci more, more strut bar. It. Damn. Who built, oh, that's Desolates, huh? Yep, so they have a steel one or they have a billet one, and we put the billet one on there just because, you know, if we're gonna do billet trailing arms, might as well do the billet cross. And that comes with, with their shock mount kit, right? Bolt right up. Once you get everything kind of aligned and bolted in place, you put this on and weld it up, and this, once everything was kind of cleared out of here, the shock tower was up and welded within 30 minutes. Dude, that is awesome. Once you got the right? inner fender wells out, cleared everything out of the way. Exactly, man. And then <laughs> you can see where we ran a bunch of our power to that starter. Yep, right relay, over here, relay, so, yeah. Um, that made it easy to kind of reroute things to where it's not over complicated. S and B makes a, a filter, that bracket that bolts on. Uh -huh. We had to make one tab that came off of the upright, uh, the shock upright, so. I know she got the PSC bolted right to the to the tower. Foil Parts had that in a couple days. That's awesome. All the parts, man. It's, yeah. it's It was super easy. It came with the lines um, already a little bit longer, so you just cut them to length. And So does this have a new pump then? It has the P-pump on there? So it gets rid of that stupid plastic Ford horrible power steering pump. With the reservoir yeah. already built in. Yeah. yeah. So, so this is all the, the PSC stuff. Okay. <laughs> Oop, Whoa! Your Air, Air B compressor. God dang! So I gotta ask you. Know, it just you, tickled my finger. My finger was on. <laughs> I gotta ask you this question because <laughs> putting a solid axle in a truck that's gonna have a lot of use out here, like in the desert, do you wish that you did a TTB? Four wheel uh, drive TTB? You know? I mean, I've ridden the TTB stuff and. I just wanted the strength. I don't want to yeah, have like to work. No on hassle. It. Like go to a wrecking yard for every single part down there. I just don't want to have to work on it, you know. Um, and that stuff can get pretty pricey too. Yeah. You know. Oh, the, if you did a an extended TTB package, you know, you're twenty grand in your front end. Yeah. You know, yeah. and this was eighteen hundred bucks for a and pair a few of other yeah. really affordable okay. components. Well, hopefully know? the big shocks and how everything's set up, uh, you know helps you out yeah I think, but uh i think i'm gonna have to uh go put that other upper on and come around <laughs> this before dark awesome yeah look at that thing she looks good she looks sexy she does yeah i'm excited i like it let's go throw her throw her through some more rocks <laughs> all right i think my phone fell out in there so i uh -oh. gotta grab it look at this tire is it leaking i don't know i think it might have leaked you think so I think it might have. Well, I got a spare. <laughs>